Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking about books with trans characters. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about books that are in adult fiction. I know that across the board we need more representation, um, but there's definitely a lot more in young adult. It's a lot harder to find LGBT rep in adult books. So I'm going to be talking about the books that I know about um, that have trans characters. All but one of these have a book that's the central character or a central character, and all but one of these that I'm recommending are written by trans authors. I'm going to go through them by genre. I don't have a ton in each genre, but I do have a little bit. Um, first I'll talk about literary fiction, then we'll go on to sci-fi fantasy, and then historical fiction. Uh, literary fiction is the stack that is the biggest. I'm going to start out with the Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Mezi. Um, this was one of my favorite books of last year. I started reading Akweke Mezi, found out about them last year, and read all of their books, and they were excellent. The Death of Vivek Oji, um, as the title would imply, focuses around this character's death. And in this book, you're seeing different people's perspectives. You're seeing Vivek's mom, you're seeing Vivek's cousin, um, you even get to see a little bit of Vivek's dad, and throughout this book, you're figuring out that the people around Vivek don't really know them. That's all that I'll say, just because I don't want to say too much, but there is some gendery stuff. They don't go out of their way and, like, say the word trans, but they are very clearly either a trans woman or trans feminine, and it's essential to a big part of the book. Um, I have a lot of feelings about all of the themes wrapped up in kind of the big reveal at the end. Um, but I highly, highly recommend this. Everything that Akweke Mezi has written is beautiful, which is why I also had to mention Freshwater by them as well, which is inspired uh, by their own lived experiences. It's about Ada, who is born um, with gods inside of her. Um, and as Ada progresses through life, uh, she also develops other personalities. I don't know if they say, like, specific identities, um, but Ada definitely seems non-binary and gets top surgery. Um, so, and, of course, a quick amnesty is non-binary. Uh, they are actually coming out with a memoir this year, um, which I'm really looking forward to. I'll put that on the screen. I can't think of what the title is. And if you're looking for more of their excellence, they also have a YA book, Pet. But... These two are adult fiction. Uh, they have trans or gender variant main characters. The next piece of literary fiction with a trans character is Nevada by Imogene Binney. This is um, kind of a road trip, I would say coming of age novel, but the character is I think in her mid-20s or possibly late 20s. Um, she's definitely out as a trans woman uh, she's kind of working a shitty job that she doesn't really like, and early on in the story she breaks up with her girlfriend. So she's kind of going through a period of figuring herself out um, as an adult. I would say that this book, kind of more than even some of the other ones, might not necessarily be for everyone just because of the narrative style. It's very stream of consciousness. Uh, they don't use quotation marks. I really loved it. Um, I will say that I think I wish the second part were longer because it felt rushed and it felt less put together than the rest of the book, but I still really enjoyed it. The character is definitely, I'm not sure that I would call her an unlikable character, but she's very realistic and her flaws are very obvious. I think this is an incredible kind of character study. I'm actually planning on rereading it sometime soon, hopefully, probably alongside Catcher in the Rye, so if anyone wants to do that with me, please do because I would love to be able to read those together and talk to somebody about it. But yeah, trans made character, road trip novel, punk, um, lots of writing, bicycles around New York City. The next book, another literary fiction, um, another complex, not 100% likable characters, that is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This is one that I recently finished and absolutely freaking loved. This is Tori Peters' debut novel that came out this year, and it focuses on kind of three characters, um, really focuses mostly on um, 
really two of them. It focuses on a trans woman, somebody who used to be trans but has since detransitioned. Um, they used to date, but after they break up, the one detransitions and hooks up with now his boss and uh, the boss becomes pregnant. So then he calls back his ex and they kind of want to work out a triad to co-parent. Um, that's the plot of the book, but that's, that's not why I like the book. Like the plot was interesting, certainly, but this is packed with so many different themes. I'm, I'm literally obsessed. I want, I don't think that a reread's going to happen anytime soon, but I really want there to be. I'm sure that you'll hear about this book a lot because, um, I've already shot the vlog and then I've talked about this in another video that I've already shot and I know I'm going to talk about it in the wrap up. So you'll hear plenty about this if you subscribe to my channel. I really like this book. It's very messy, very human, um, and just excellent. And then the final literary fiction book that I have, I can only technically half recommend because I'm only halfway through it. I got in a really big reading slump, um, which I think I'm breaking out of more, so maybe I can finish this soon, but I really love the first half of it so far. And that is 30 Names of Night by Zane Jukadar, and this focuses on a closeted Syrian American boy who is dealing with grief, um, while also, uh, you know, still trying to have a family with his sister. And eventually he finds this journal of this person uh, who is in his Syrian community, who has a connection with his mom through uh, this project that she was working on. His mom is the person he's grieving over. But he finds these journals and finds that this person is queer. Um, so you're getting this grief, you're, so you're getting both of their stories. You're getting him unpacking his grief, and you're also getting the story that revolves around um, birds. That's kind of interesting. There's a lot of bird metaphors, a lot or like symbolism. It's really good, and it's so beautifully written. And that's kind of why I had to stop reading it a little bit because I was having a really hard time with really, like, thick, beautiful writing. Like I even stopped halfway in a poetry collection. Which I never do. I usually read those in one or two sittings. But this is beautiful and it's excellent so far and you should pick it up too. Next up we have Sci-Fi Fantasy. Um, this first book, it's housed in the fantasy department. It's really more of like a dystopian book. There's not anything I think that's inherently sci-fi fantasy. It's dystopian and it's weird western. And it is so excellent. I read it twice last year. A Bright Woman Wanted by Sarah Gailey. I don't want to say too much because as you can see, it's very small. It's, I think, technically a novella. But this is about queer, anti-fascist librarians. The librarians are not exactly the type of librarians you would expect um, in this dystopian Western world. I think all of the really featured main characters are queer. And uh, there's a secondary character, Love Interest, who's non-binary. And the person who wrote this book is non-binary. It is just excellent. I read the audiobook, then had to buy the book. And I'm so glad that I did. I've already reread it once. I am really excited to get to Sarah Gailey's other work. The American Hippo Duology, River of Teeth. I can't remember the other one. But that one is another Weird West that I'm really looking forward to. And from what, what I hear, there are lots of other queer characters. Don't know about trans rep. Uh, definitely queer rep. They have a number of other books, too. I'm not sure of the trans content of them. Um, but I'm excited to read whatever Sarah Gailey has out, to be honest. I need to get on that. Then next we have a sci-fi book. Um, and I think I lied in the intro. There isn't one book that doesn't have a trans author. It's two. And this is the first one, but it is one of the best books that I read last year. And I'm obsessed. It is The Seep by Chana Porter. It is everything. Um, it's a very character driven sci-fi novel. This focuses on our main character, Trina, who is trans, but in the world uh, that she lives in, aliens take over and the aliens aren't necessarily what you would think the aliens are the seep and the seep is a lot of different things the seep 
is kind of a technology. Um, it's something that you can take and it's kind of like a drug, um, but it's also something that can heal. Basically, the seep takes over and the world turns into like a communist utopia sort of a deal. And there are lots of more medical possibilities. And Trina's wife decides to take one of those big medical leaps um, that's seen as typical in this society. Trina is not happy about this and she deals with a lot of grief. So this book is definitely primarily about Trina, um, Trina's processing of that. There's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on. And there's another plot in here that kind of looks at the seep and what exactly it is. Uh, so that's kind of an aspect of it too. So there's a lot going on with this book, but this is beautifully written. Um, I love care. I love books that are a deep dive into character. This was just honestly like one of the perfect books. I don't really read a lot of sci-fi fantasy, but I'm finding that I really like it, or at least I like sci-fi as long as it's not too technical. I like the idea of complex world building, but when it comes down to it, it's a lot to process. Um, so this character-driven sci-fi was perfect. And the main character's trans. Then the final book that I have is actually an anthology. The editor, I don't know if she's trans. I haven't seen anything about her, but the people who are actually writing the stories are LGBT. Not all of the stories are trans, but there are some that are. And that is Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time, an indigenous LGBT sci-fi anthology. This has so much really great stuff. I won't go into detail about like what all the stories are because they're already all short stories. Um, but this is a beautiful anthology and there is some trans rep in here. Two spirit people written by two spirit people. It's a great time. Then finally we go to the smallest stack that I have um, which is historical fiction. In general I don't really read a ton of historical fiction. Um, uh, and I'm kind of using this category a little bit loosely because at least when I think of historical fiction, I think of like the 50s or later. Um, I know that that's not technically true. Um, I think that's probably because there's just more historical fiction set the 50s or way later. But I'll be really honest, a lot of that, um, especially stuff written about like the 1700s, 1800s, I just get bored. And I don't know what it is. I have in the past blamed it on the Charles Dickens class that I had to take because that was set around then. But I don't know if we can put all the blame on Charles. However, regardless, um, one of these books is a little bit more recent than that, but it is definitely not contemporary. Um, it is The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Kazara. This is set in the 1980s. This focuses on the first all Latinx drag house. This is the other book that I wasn't sure if it was made by a trans author. I have not seen anything about Joseph Kassar's gender, so um, I don't know. However, this book is excellent. It is one of the best books that I've read this year, or that I read last year. I know I said that about The Seep 2 and about The Death of Vivek Oji. They were tied for the top three books that I read last year. So you know they're all good um and it's proof that i should be reading more trans books because they make the top of my list um i'm already off to a good start with the transition baby honestly but anyways the house of impossible beauties set in the 1980s impeccable like if you watch paris is burning and read this book like the atmosphere is just 150 percent spot on from what i can tell obviously i wasn't there um but <laughs> From what I can tell, it's excellent. This is actually does have some characters that were real people. Obviously, it's fictionalized accounts of their life. Um, but I know Venus Extravaganza was a person. Um, and Hector, I'm assuming Angel was too, but I don't know about the rest of the characters. There are at least two others. And I think the other two were fictional. I could be wrong. I don't know the whole story. I didn't do the research that Joseph Kassara probably did. Um, however, it's incredible. It is very sad. Like, very sad. Um, I'm going to put content warnings or links to where you can find content warnings for all of these because there is some 
uh, stuff in a lot of these. It is pretty intense. Um, but this is beautiful, sad, so fucking sad, but an incredible reading experience. The last book that I have is technically a TBR pick. It's not really a recommendation because I haven't read it yet, so I can't recommend it, but I do want to tell you about it because it exists. So you should have the opportunity to read it too. And that is Revolutionary by Alex Myers. This is set during the Revolutionary War and focuses on Deborah Sampson, who was an actual figure. Um, she was a woman who dressed up as a man to join the Revolutionary War. Now, the thing with this book and the reason that I picked it up um, was because I heard about it on Jackson Bird's podcast a few years ago. Um, but the person who wrote the book was actually related to, or is, well, he is, but Deborah Sampson is no more because she was in the Revolutionary War. Anyways, the person who authored this book is actually related to De Deborah Sampson and is a trans man. And I haven't read the book to know, like, how much it shows her as a trans man or shows them as a trans man. I don't know how to do the pronouns in this situation because they change throughout the story. So I can't 100% say like, this is totally a trans book because I don't know how much he does with that. However, I do know that it's written by a trans author and with the sound, with the way that it sounded with the interview, this at the very least explores gender in a more complex way than a lot of historians do. And he actually talked about why this was probably more than just she wanted to go off to war or whatever. So if you're interested in this, definitely check it out. I do really want to read this. I'm not sure how close to the top of my TBR it is uh, because of the whole setting bit that I talked about, but all of my queer books are typically higher up on my TBR. So maybe I'll get to this sometime relatively soon. Yes. So those are some adult trans book picks. Um, if you have recommendations for trans books um definitely let me know about them down in the comments or if you're thinking about picking up any of these books thank you all so much for watching bye